have to keep the pressure on the Russians when they're conducting these activities. Um, that's good surveillance, that's interception, letting them know that we know they're there. And where we catch them doing nefarious operations like blowing up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, we need to take appropriate uh, action. The Russians have a very good hydrographic and oceanographic research uh, uh, expertise. Uh, and now we're in strategic competition with Russia. Uh, they've stepped it up and they're looking at the vulnerabilities in our infrastructure, everything from our undersea cables uh, that carry the internet and communications through to uh, the uh, energy infrastructure that leads from wind farms uh, and other offshore installations. And what is an appropriate deterrent? Well, I mean, uh, peace is an appropriate de deterrent um, and we have to keep the pressure on the Russians when they're conducting these activities. Um, that's good surveillance, that's interception, letting them know that we know they're there. And where we catch them doing nefarious operations like blowing up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, we need to take appropriate uh, action. Um, they've got uh, incredible levels of expertise, which they've developed over the last 20 years, which include a range of specialist submarines and uh, seabed uh, research and operation ships. Mm. Benjamin, talk to us about the strategic um, concern or considerations here that are at play by way of of Russia kind of sailing around the North Sea and trying to soak up some intelligence on these things. What what is the purpose here? As as Chris was saying, they have expertise. Uh, you know, so what are they what are they trying to achieve? I think the purpose is twofold, really. There is this specific intelligence they would be able to gather on uh, potential vulnerabilities or key infrastructure points in order that they might be able to hit if they uh, were so minded. But I think the bigger strategic picture is about testing Western resolve and testing our um, commitment to deterrence. I mean, this is the it's nothing new in many ways. Back in 2017, uh, NATO warned of these kind of activities from Russia. And we've seen it's it's just one of many of the type of hybrid measures uh, that Russia takes in order to push boundaries and to really test resolve. And it's sad to note that we're still seeming to fight with one hand tied behind our backs, despite the um, developments in the last year, particularly with Russia's full scale invasion of Ukraine. We still seem unwilling to actually send that signal to say this is unacceptable and we will stop it. Mm. What should that signal be then, in your view? Is it a case of literally firing a warning shot? Well, I think the measures that were just outlined by the uh, former Rear Admiral are very good um, as a starting point. And the, um, the the idea that a research ship uh, would be carrying a balaclava-clad Kalashnikov toting guard is uh, certainly foreign to any kind of research I've ever done. Mm. How they got it through the effort. It sounds a bit basic, though, doesn't it? You know, it doesn't sound like an all-out invasion or anything. No, it doesn't. But again, this is about pushing boundaries and testing limits. And uh, we've seen that with the Russians doing that with the flights of their Tu-95 uh, strategic bombers. Uh, we've seen it with them buzzing American warships uh, in the past. And these are all ways of just saying, we think we can get away with this because we don't think you're tough enough and you're willing to actually stand up and defend yourself. So a couple of strong signals to that effect, properly escorting Russian ships out of um, out of any of our waters, away from uh, critical infrastructure points would send a strong mm. sign. And that should be done even if we don't have conclusive proof. As the Times report yesterday said, proving beyond all reasonable doubt is very difficult. We don't have to prove beyond all reasonable doubt. We're giving the Russians the benefit of that doubt at the moment, and that's to our detriment. Chris, do we do this to Russia? Do we spy on uh, them? Do we go over there and have a little nosy at what they're up to under the sea? Uh, yes, we do. Of right. course, we do. And we've got a range of uh, surveillance devices in space, uh, uh, in in the atmosphere, uh, and also underwater as well. Uh, we do it uh, mostly with military means, but uh, I think, as has just been indicated, what they're doing is probing our civilian infrastructure. Uh, and it's basically a, a Russian doctrine known as war in peace. They're conducting competition uh, on the edge of conflict, not doing enough really to provoke us, um, but really sounding out our defences, probing our weaknesses. But there's also something more as well. There's a generation of Russian underwater unmanned vehicles that are coming on stream soon. And I think they're actually mapping the seabed where they want to operate in future. Uh, the Russians are very good at this. And if they intend to do us harm, it's going to be these unmanned vehicles that will do it. Uh, because they're anonymous, they can be denied. Uh, and just as the, with the Nord Stream 2 uh, pipeline, everybody's guessing who did it. Uh, I reckon I know who did it. It was the Russians themselves, because they were saying, if we can do it here, uh, we can do it anywhere else. 
and they're the only ones really with the capability. Is that is that just a hunch? No, it's not a hunch. If you you look at who can actually do that sort of thing, uh, the Russians have a complete directorate that has submarines and other vehicles that have been doing this for about 20 years. Mm. Uh, the only other country that can do it is America, and their only specialist submarine was in the Pacific at the time, so that would be quite difficult.